Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to She Is Me, Rabata's 2016 educational fundraiser where we are celebrating 15 centuries of female scholarship, women's contributions to community and service of this ummah. Today we are in the 6th century and we are celebrating Fatima bin Sa'd al Khair. Fatima bin Sa'd al Khair was born in China to a family that was originally from Valencia. They had moved out of Spain, out of Islamic Spain, when the situation for Muslims got, was beginning to change there. And they went to China where she was born. She was born in China. She grew in a home of great scholarship and wealth. And her father was her first teacher. She, at, at age seven, it said that she was seen in Hadith circles. She was already beginning to study in, at age seven. By 19, when her father died, she was an accomplished scholar already, meaning perhaps she was some type of child prodigy, for, perhaps. Because we, she counts her father as one of her teachers, she also counts as her colleagues, or those who studied with him, Ibn Ajozi and Ibn Asakit, who are two very famous, important early scholars for our, in our ummah. Uh, Fatima bin Sa'd al-Khair also studied with a very famous woman who was sought after during her lifetime named Fatima al -Juzdania. And this woman was a great scholar. She was the longest living narrator of the books of At-Tabarani and also the shortest connection to those hadith. So Fatima bin Sa'd al-Khair was also one of her students she was a student of many famous teachers. She traveled a lot. She went to Baghdad and learned from a number of teachers there. Eventually, she got married and moved to Damascus. Her husband was a secretary to Nur al-Din al-Zinqi, who was a very important leader of her era. Some believe he was perhaps a mujaddid. He had great contributions during that period of time. She was lucky to live, or blessed we should say, to live in a time when Salah al-Din Ayyubi had taken back uh, Jerusalem and the Crusaders were finally out of Jerusalem. And during that time as well, it was previous to the Mughal invasion, the Mongol invasion, so there was, it was relative peace. She were studied in Damascus. She mostly taught in Damascus, however, by that time she was beginning to teach. And she also then moved to Cairo, where she became a famous teacher as well. And it is known that students would come to Cairo specifically to learn from her, from Fatima bin Sa'd al Khair. Holding the picture of Fatima bin Sa'd al Khair is a young woman who has also devoted her life to studying Islamic sciences, Sana Muhyiddin. Ustaza Sana Muhyiddin went first in her 20s to Damascus. I actually met her there where she began her serious studies of Islamic sciences. She came back to the United States and began to study her in, in, in the secular world where she completed a master's degree in marriage and family therapy. What an important, important subject to contribute to our ummah with. Then she went to Zambia, only recently got back. I believe it's been about a year that she's been back from Zambia. She went there with her family and studied in Zambia for a full year. I believe it was two years where she became a qualified anima. She is qualified in, this, in the Hanafi school of fiqh. And I know that she's got a lot of people who message her and call her with Hanafi questions. And she is very generous with her time. She works in her community in teaching and in helping to build families. She works with her students and her patients both to really help them live the beautiful tradition of Islamic sciences, the practical application of our beautiful faith and the knowledge of this faith. Sana has carried forth the tradition of Fatima bin Sa'd al-Khair, traveling where she needs to go to learn and then settling and teaching we thank her for her service and we pray for Fatima bin Sa'd al Khair that she will be of the, upest, the, the highest levels of Jannah as well as Sana, as well as all of you. And do go to support.rabata.org where you will find the programs that are developed in order to continue this legacy 
Ribat is our online academic program. There we are working to really develop knowledge in women, both even if it's just one class where a woman takes that home and she has a practical application of her faith and can teach her family, perhaps teach in a local Islamic school. We have a two-year program which will qualify her as an Islamic studies teacher in a local Islamic school. We have a four-year program to bring out alimas, da'iyas, women who are teaching and calling and uplifting the ummah in knowledge. We also have Daybreak Press where we're publishing books. These books they, we're working to get them in public schools where people can read about Islam, read about Muslim characters that are positive. Think about the books you read as a youngster, as a young child, and even as an adult, where the Muslim characters are always in, cast in a negative light. We are publishing books and working to get them out there that cast Muslims in a positive, normative light. We also have Daybreak Bookshop, where we bring in people from across the, 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 the the gamut, we can say, the, the whole range of people come together to talk to one another. We're working through Daybreak Global Bookshop. We try to work on issues. We have books. We also work on issues. And we've been working for almost a full year now on anti-gun violence, a very important issue for Muslims to work in the community about this issue, anti-gun violence. We also have Leadership and Legacy, Legacy legacy and Leadership, Leadership and Legacy, which is the educational curriculum program. We've just begun this. Our first work was in March, where we, we republished and let out for free a, woman's, a unit about women's history, Muslim women in history, which I think I mentioned earlier that the St. Paul Public School District picked up a couple of those lessons in order to teach in their schools. Very exciting, exciting work. We have a lot of hopes and dreams. Project Lena for converts, we're hoping to take that across the country. If you donate to Project Lena, what we're going to do with that money is we're going to take that workshop and we're going to go to towns and cities and bring that workshop to people. We're, and we're going to hopefully uplift some converts and sometimes converts can really feel disjointed and Project Lena helps them bring their whole self to Islam. Go to support.robota.org and you'll find all of our projects, including SNAP, our, with the project we are supporting that is a local project here in Minneapolis that is a shelter for women. Rabata Care and SNAP are both zakat eligible. We're very careful with your zakat money and careful to put it only to very clear zakat eligible places. Please give us your zakat in those two projects so that we can help those that we are reaching out to. And we and your sadaqa is inshallah rewarded many, many, many times as in this month, as you well know, because I'm sure you're going to the fun, local fundraisers and hearing all of the hadith about that. And don't forget, on the last day of this fundraiser, we will have a 15-hour du'a-a-thon. Join us. Assalamu alaikum.